Mukashi Mukashi. This is a Kamishi by Tail called the Three Paper Charms from Japan. Long ago, high up in a mountain village, there lived a young boy who spent all of his days studying with a very old and very wise monk. Now the boy also liked to take walks through the forest and look at the trees, collect berries, and usually he never came across anybody on his walks. But one afternoon, as he was walking along the mountain road, there was an old lady in his path. And she started and she looked at him and she said, oh, how have you been? It's been such a long time. You've gotten so big, you're so grown up. I know your mother and I know your father and I know all your relatives. Now the little boy was very confused and he wasn't sure who this lady was, but she seemed so convinced that she knew him that when she invited him to her home in the mountains for dinner that night, he accepted. Now when the boy got back to the monastery and told the monk that he lived with his tail, the monk started to shake his head. I don't know about this, he said. You should probably be pretty careful because what you don't realize, young man, is that in these mountains, there's always lived mountain witches and you might have just come across one today. The boy said, no, that couldn't be. She was a nice little old lady, white hair, beautiful clothes, and she just seemed so genuine that she knew everybody in my family. I do think I'm going to go to dinner. And the monk said, all right, if that's what you decide, but I have three paper charms to give you, just in case. So the boy put the charms in his pocket and went and had dinner at the old woman's house. And he sat down, and it was an amazing dinner. All sorts of courses, all sorts of dishes, one better than the next. And she kept saying to him, eat, eat. You probably don't get enough food at that monastery, so eat, eat some more. And nom, 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 nom. he just ate his way through the entire meal. Until finally, he felt very full. And you know how it is once, after you've eaten a really big meal, you start to get a little sleepy, so he's kind of sleepy. And the old woman noticed this. And it was getting dark outside, and so she said, why don't you stay here for the evening? And then you can head home in the morning, and you can get on the road when it's light. But it's too late right now. You look too tired. You're too full. And so the boy accepted and snuggled down into her guest room. Now, during the night, there was a huge storm, all sorts of thunder and lightning. The windows were shaking. The rain was beating against the roof, and the boy woke up. And all of a sudden, he thought, maybe I shouldn't have stayed. It, it's actually a little scary up here in the mountains, and I, really, I don't really know this lady. And so he started to creep towards the door, and peek out his door, because he heard that she was stirring out there. So he got up to the, wind, the door hole, the peephole, and he looked through, and instead of seeing that nice little white-haired old lady, a Yamamba, a mountain witch. <gasps> he was terrified. He thought, oh no, what have I done? I should have listened to the monk. Now I'm in for it. Now I'm in big trouble. And as he started to back away, he made some noise and the witch heard him and she burst into his room and she said, what are you doing, young man? And he said, um, um, um. And she said, you know, you've had your dinner. Now it's time for me to eat mine. Ha, ha, ha. And she cackled. And right then, all the boy could think of was to say, um, I really have to go to the bathroom. And so she stopped for a minute and thought, all right, I'll let you go to the bathroom. But she wrapped a rope around his waist and tied it to him tight and said, this will only take you as far as the outhouse. And then you'll come back and be my dinner. <laughs> well, the boy went out to the outhouse post. And as he grew nearer and nearer to it, he took one of the paper charms out of his pocket and he stuck it on the post. And he said, oh, paper charm, paper charm, please protect me. And the paper charm said, okay. And the boy untied the rope and ran away. Now, the witch was inside getting more and more impatient, waiting for him to come back. And she would start yelling out, are you done yet? And the post, in the voice of the boy, would say, not yet. And she would yell again, are you quite finished? And the post with the voice of the boy would say, almost, but not quite. 
until finally she realized that something was going on. So she tugged and she tugged and she tugged and that boy didn't come back in. Instead, she tugged the whole post down. And now she was furious. Ah, oh, he tricked me. And so she ran out of her house and she started to run after that boy. Now her feet were so big that she could easily cover much of the ground that the little boy had covered. And she ran after him crying, I'm going to catch you, now you will be my dinner. But the boy, thinking quickly again, grabbed another paper charm out of his pocket, threw it behind him and said, make me a river. And right there, right behind him, a huge, flowing, torrential river appeared. And it was wide and it was deep, and the witch fell right into it. I'm going to get you, she cried. She was too angry to stop chasing him. and She was too powerful to have the river beat her. So she swam across that river and got up and continued to chase the little boy. Now the boy had one paper charm left, and so he threw it behind him and said, Make me a mountain of sand. And sure enough, whoosh, rising right out of the earth came a huge mountain of sand. Now if any of you have ever been to the beach or tried to climb a dune or something, you know that's really hard to get through. But this witch was so angry and so hungry that she just clawed her way through that mountain of sand. And sure enough, she was chasing him in no time again. By this point, the boy had finally gotten back to the monastery. And he started knocking really hard on the door. Let me in! Let me in! He cried, please, let me in! You were right! You were right! And sure enough, the monk who was living inside put on his robe and shuffled to the door and heard the boy knocking. And so when he opened the door, the little boy said, you were right, you were right, she's a mountain witch. And she's been chasing me all the way from her house down the mountain. I'm so scared, I don't know what to do. And the monk simply said, come inside, go find a hiding place and I will deal with the witch. So it wasn't too long until she came by, furious as ever and hungrier than ever too. And she came up to the monastery's door and she said, where is that boy? I know he's in here. I saw him come in and he is my dinner. He's made me chase long and hard and I'm hungry. And the monk simply looked at her and said, well, you, you're hungry. Well, I happen to have something that perhaps you could snack on because I, I don't know where he's gone to. Come in, come in, sit down and I will give you some food. And at the promise of food, the witch calmed down just a little bit. So she sat with the monk, and as they ate their snacks quietly, she fuming, still waiting to get to that boy, the monk looked up at her and he said, so I hear that mountain witches can do amazing things. Yes, the mountain witch snarled. He said, I hear that mountain witches can make themselves as big as a house, even bigger than a house, just huge sizes. Can you do that? And the mountain witch looked at him and said, of course I can. And so she huffed and she puffed, and she breathed heavy and concentrated, and soon enough, a huge, horrible monster, even worse than the witch that she was, was in her place. <laughs> she laughed. The monk wasn't scared and looked up at this towering monster full of ferocious teeth and flames and said, that is really very interesting. Now I have also heard that mountain witches can make themselves incredibly, incredibly small. Can you do that? But of course, growled the mountain witch monster. And she huffed and she puffed again and breathed really heavy and turned into a very small bean. And with that, the monk picked her up and ate her. And she was never, ever heard from again. The end.